Hi everybody, it's me, Miss You, and we're going to uh, go over a few examples on how to graph um, when we don't have the form y is equal to mx plus b. So in this case, we have 4x plus y is equal to 0. Um, in this case, I would subtract 4x from both sides, and I end up with y is equal to negative 4x plus 0. That is in the form, I've now changed it, y is equal to mx plus b. b we have is 0, and the slope m is equal to negative 4 over 1. I'm going to go down 4 over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. And I have my first graph. The next question, too, is a little less obvious. In this case, we're going to find the x and y intercepts. That means we're going to find out what happens when x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, I get 10 times 0 minus 3y is equal to negative 15. This becomes 0 minus 3y is equal to negative 15. Now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3, and I end up with y is equal to negative 5. Okay. Now what happens when y is equal to 0? When y is equal to 0, I get 10 times x minus 3 times 0 is equal to negative 15. All I did was plug in the 0 to where the y was. And I get 10x minus 0 is equal to 15. And I now I have 10x is equal to negative 15. And I'm going to divide both sides by 10. This becomes x is equal to negative 1.5. Our table is going to look like this. x, y, when x is 0, y is minus 5, so it's when y is 0, x is negative 1.5. So let's act when x is 0, y is negative 5, when x is negative 1.5, y is 0. So this is what our graph will look like. And here we go. Let's look at question 3. We have x plus y is equal to negative 3. Again, when there's nothing in front of the y, it's pretty easy for us to go negative x, negative x. I end up with y is equal to negative x, negative 3. That looks like mx plus b. That means negative 3 is the y-intercept. Negative 3 is the y-intercept. And mx is negative 1. So m is equal to negative 1 over 1, which is equal to rise over run. We're going to go down 1 over 1. So from the point, we're going to go down 1 over 1. And this is our line. Here we have x is equal to negative 5. That means regardless of what the slope looks like, so we get 5. So x is always 5. We have 0. We have 1. We have negative 2. It doesn't matter what the y is. x is always 5. And our graph is going to look like this. Let's look at the next one. 7 
x plus 2y is equal to negative 10. We're going to go what happens when x is equal to 0. I have 7 times 0 plus 2y is equal to negative 10. That becomes 0 plus 2y is equal to negative 10. And we're going to divide both sides by 2. And I end up with y is equal to negative 5. Next, what happens when y is equal to 0? First we do x, then we do y, and I end up with 7x plus 2y is equal to negative 10. y is going to equal to 0, plus 2 times y is equal to negative 10. 7x plus 0 is equal to negative 10. I have 7x is equal to negative 10, and x, divide both sides by 7, x is equal to negative 10 over 7, okay? That is equal to negative 1 and 3 sevenths, almost negative 1 and a half, okay? Um, let's graph it. X when X is zero, Y is negative five. When X is negative one and three sevenths, this is negative one and right around here is negative three sevenths. Y is equal to zero, which is right here. This is what our graph looks like. And let's do one more example, okay? And we have x negative 2y is equal to negative 6. What happens when x is equal to 0? We have 0 minus 2y is equal to negative 6. We divide negative 2 by both sides. I end up with y is equal to 3. Okay. What happens when y is equal to 0? When y is equal to 0, I got x negative 2y is equal to negative 6. I have x negative 2 times 0 is equal to negative 6. Here I have x minus 0 is equal to negative 6. That means x is equal to negative 6. Okay. So let's graph it out when x is equal to 0, which is right here, y is equal to positive 3. When y is equal to 0, which is the y-axis, x is equal to negative 6. And this is what our graph looks like. Okay, let's do the other side on your own, and I will post the answers.